Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's the Buff Geek here, joined by... What up, guys? It's David here. I'm back again. Yes, we are back, and... Um, it's been too long. Yeah, we're about a week late. <laughs> Sorry, Stu. Um, I, it's my fault. Basically, I had to... Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say it so much as that. Well... I mean, yeah, it's, you're to blame. I'm just trying to be nice. Okay, right. Yeah, th- thanks. It's, it's weird for me too. Don't worry. Like, I was like, "What is going <laughs> on? You are sick." Yeah. So <laughs> sick in the head. <laughs> um, last week I had a a TV show to go and um, act in, and then I had an advert, so we couldn't do it the Friday night, and it was basically oh, a whale. Such a hard life. A whale day. It is fucking hard life. I had spreadsheets to stare at, and then some more spreadsheets to stare at. Oh, and then I stacked some shelves. At least the pay's good there. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Pay and good being an actor. Well, you know that. I don't. I've never been paid for it. Have you not? Nope. Uh, oh, well, uh, as a kid, I was. Um, and is that where the bad memories come from? A little bit. They usually start with, shh, don't tell anyone. Ah, uh, yes. So, um, <laughs> or <laughs> paid for the improv gig uh, last year or two years ago, whatever, but that's about it. And that was like 40 quid. So... For three months' work. <laughs> oh no, you don't learn anything for improv. Just games. I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking great start. <laughs> so I just First laughed into your ears. rule of improv, say yeah. Uh, second rule, listen. Nah. Okay. Brilliant. What are you saying? Um, yeah, I'm going to be in the new film uh, starring me and Jim Carrey called No Man. Oh yeah? Yes. Is that like a dad joke? That was my best attempt. I have no idea what you were talking about. Well, you've seen a film called Yes Man. Ah, right, okay, I'm with you now. That was shite. Right, no. maybe it's just because you don't watch enough films. Mm. I've you... seen Yes Man, I've read the book. read the book before I've seen the film. I was disappointed with the film at first, but I actually quite enjoy the film. Read? Yeah. Book? Uh-huh. Read book? Yes. Me heads don't understand. Listen, listen book. You probably can. Audible listen. book. Yes. Listen book. Yes. We're not sponsored by Audible. <laughs> no, Audible <laughs> is a word, not a, just a brand. Well, that is that is very true. Also, hear. we're both sick. So today we're both we both have the cold. So, um, though our, our only you, option. You clearly don't listen. I said at the weekend. What? I said I wasn't feeling great at the weekend. You sniffed a couple times as you came in here. Probably. That was more you the smells. You don't look that good. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Surly Podcast. <laughs> we're just going to sit and take the piss out of each other. We're just going to be horrible to each other. Because it's either that or talk about what we're supposed to talk about tonight. Well, yes. And basically, what we were, what we were going to do was cover Batman versus Superman last week. And then Suicide Squad this week. And you raised to my attention that our previous podcasts on both of those were actually rather good. And I was like, well, of course they are, because we were in them. Yes. But I went back and listened to both of them, and I was like, oh shit, they are good. But I kind of feel like if we're going to do, if we're going to take the DC, well, they don't like being called DCEU, apparently. They don't like it. The DCEU, the DCEU, the DCEU. DCEU. (sighs) If we're going to take the DCFU. If we're going to take the DC. Um, is that the DC Splintered universe, oh, the DC fractured universe, the DC film universe, DC's fucking universe, of okay, universe okay, the multiverse. You're going to do your rant on the next episode, <laughs> which is the movie news. That's called the hook, ladies and gentlemen. Episode two. That was the Batman versus Superman one. I know, I know, and um, uh, I say what was Suicide, Suicide Squad? I want to say 25 and 26. I think it was 26, but I feel like Blade Runner was 26. Blade Runner was 26. Ooh, so Suicide Squad... 28 and 29. <clears throat> because we'd done 28 and then we'd done the extended cut for the Blu-ray release and we had done an extra half hour of... Um, I talked about the Joker and... and scary Clowns. The, yeah, yeah. Which is crazy to think. I think it's actually just about a year ago. How meta is this? That's not going to work. Oh, be meta. Be so meta. <laughs> Fucking hate that how meta. But it's not going to work. That... Definitely a good casting and... Uh... <clears throat> that sums up the film quite nicely, actually. 
Definitely good casting. And well, well you've, you've skipped. So we're going <laughs> to do BBS <laughs> and we're going to do Suicide Squad. Just just a, Quick. a top up, if you will. Top five. But if you want to go back and really just listen to like us go a bit more in depth in both the films, because I think both of those podcasts were about an hour and a half each. Um, the link will be in the description, but as we said, it's episode 2 and episode 28, 29. Yes. So, um, first off, we're going to start off with BVS, which uh, I watched, we, well, we both obviously watched last week, and this is the extended cut, and you watched the extended cut, so that's three hours, right? Uh-huh. Um, I want to hear some things that you liked about the film. You know what I like about the film, and I said it in the last podcast, I'll say it in this one. Some of the action scenes are fucking awesome. Yeah. The warehouse fight scene is lifted straight out of the Arkham game. I feel like I'm paraphrasing myself here because I basically said this. Lifted straight out of the Arkham games. It's so okay, smooth. I got all these notes that are different. <laughs> it's smooth, <laughs> um, fluid motion. Not rushed. You know how some films, they're, like, they're fast-paced fighting and things. And Batman really takes his time with shit. He gets shot in the back of the head. I know. <laughs> That's a quality like, moment. <laughs> The guy just like comes up right behind him and it pings off his obviously like Kevlar adamantium helmet. <laughs> oh, I don't think you can say that. Can I say batmantium yet, or is that too? Spoilery? No, that's okay. Batmantium, because that's right. Okay. If you've read it, you'll understand. If you haven't, you won't. I don't know what's it's happening. I don't know what's happening. Is it batmantium? Batmantinium? I can't remember. But they do not, do they? Do they? Saying nothing. That's fucking disgusting, but also really good. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was part of Batman Metal just before... No, I'm not telling you anymore. But basically... Is that the recent one? It's fresh off the press, basically. Like two weeks ago, right? Something like that, yeah. Uh, what's it called? What's, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, they tell him. They tell him. Oh, I can't find it. But anyway, yeah, so I, I love that scene. Yeah, that's it there. Batmanium. Batmanium. Down the bottom. Batmanium. Batmanium. So Wait, let me see it again. Batmium? No. Maybe it's called Batmium. No, it's Batmanium. It's Bat- got Batman in it. Batmanium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell. So, there we go. That's what his helmet was made of. Batmanium. So that's why the bullet didn't get through. Because when the bullet got to the helmet, the molecules... Of this metal, or just like Krav Maga and that fucking bullet and deflect it away. Is that how it works? That's what I'm saying. Wow. It's a newly discovered metal, it could do anything. I'm going with that. That's interesting. Yeah. So, no, I, I did. I really liked the warehouse scene. I didn't like the fact that the setup for the warehouse scene was mad. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> okay, well. <clears throat> what if they'd had a fucking dog with the same name as well? Would he rush off to the kennels and beat up all the dog walkers and be like, got your dog soups? Come on, crypto, let's go. Um, oh dear. Um, okay, so I shat all over Martha, as everyone did, yeah? <laughs> Whereas, you said she was hot, but then you go and shit all over her. I like that kind of stuff, man. Yeah, what okay, can I say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No glass tables for me, I just go full on, right in there. <laughs> um, I actually don't dislike the Martha thing that much now. I know, you're giving me a face. <laughs> Not um, just any face, this face. This face. <laughs> well, I mean... Okay, it, it, it sounds a bit silly, but then also, if you think about it, he's like, what the fuck is this guy doing knowing my mom's name? And then Lois, Superman's tie to re- to the, the human world... Mm-hmm. Says it's his mother's name. That's his mother's name. Okay? And it's Lois, not Martha, that stops him from killing Superman. Martha snaps him out of it. Right? Mm-hmm. That stops him from killing killing Superman only because he's been he's obviously thinking about it constantly. Um and it would he's stop been you. Sent there yeah, but it would stop you in your tracks. To fight Batman because Alex has said Got your mum. Yeah, but it would it would stop you in your tracks if you're Bruce Wayne. So if someone said your mother's name, that you're your their ultimate enemy, and then this woman who's covering him and is from Earth, he will know who Lois Lane is. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, he will. Is he also knows how to beat her? How to beat her? Yes. 
As soon as Batman be- meets someone for the first time or learns of their existence, he figures out how to defeat them. You can't beat me. Yeah, he could. Yeah. Yeah, he could. I don't believe it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the things Batfleck will do for a paycheck. Well, <clears throat> that, oh, no, no, I'm not even going to make a joke about something that I was going to make a joke about because that's just too much. Okay. It was to do with alcoholism, though. Oh, straight back to that. Ah, I know, I know. I'll drink to that. <laughs> oh, um, so yeah, it's not it's not Martha that stops her from killing Superman. It, it 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 snaps him out of it, but it's Lois. Yeah, she just kind of interferes in everything. Eh? She does interfere too much, a little bit for for all. Plus, in comparison all to Man of Steel, Superman is a whiny bitch in this film. I didn't find him that whiny. Uh, just what was whiny about him? He didn't, he didn't sit there complaining. I don't know. He just wasn't the same. He was actually kind of cool in Man of Steel. Especially before he wore the suit. And he was like, you know, on oil rigs, just fucking rescuing people. Like, bare chest, like, and stuff. And then in this one, he's all like... He's had two years to sit and think about the fact that is he doing the right thing by helping people? And more to the point, he, he thinks he is... Overall, even though he's kind of split, I think it's like a 60 40. Because you've got to know that if you can help someone like that, you should. Mm. But people still then go, oh, well, you know what? Even though you've helped all these people, well, we don't trust you and we hate you. Which is going to, it's going to fucking hurt. Well, so that's, that's I don't think point. he was that whiny at all. You've obviously not watched The Force Awakens. Oh, with Kylo Ren? Yeah. Ah, he's really whiny. He's whiny. He's a bitch. And Anakin Skywalker and Clone Attack of the Clones is very whiny as well. He doesn't like sand. No, he does not like sand. Uh, and no man likes. Um, oh, I've forgotten her fucking name now. Doesn't matter. Joke's gone. Han Solo. It, no, that's not it. Oh, okay. But um, <clears throat> and I was going to say that Padme Amidala, but I can't remember the real actress's name. Natalie Portman. Yeah. How can? <laughs> okay. Anyway. Right. Okay. Would I want to go? On a date with Natalie Portman, abso-friggin-lutely. Would I want to star opposite her in something that required us to be romantic on screen? Hell no. no. no I, I, I'll admit. Because she's wank at being a love interest. And I think she literally just does it for the paycheck and hates every second of it. But anything she does on her own... She, after Star Wars, amazing. she said she wanted to step out. She wanted to be like a vet or something like that. She didn't want to be an actress. Well, I, I think it was all the blue screen stuff. Like, talking to, like, you're in a blue room with a fucking green ball in front of you. Mm-hmm. And I think that just drove her nuts. Yeah. I Whereas imagine. I could do it. I could absolutely act my face off to a blue screen. I think I'd rather do that than go on location sometimes. Oh, it'd be easier than... Right, you got a choice. Speak to that screen, or we fly you to a remote part of this fucking place that takes you 12 hours in a plane and four days in a car. Yeah, and you're going to stay there for three months. Uh, I'll go to the screen, thanks. Yep, two hours Um, mark done. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so I think I'm actually kind of growing on the Martha thing. I think that it's not as silly as it was as as thought. Um, Oh yeah, so I didn't mean to cut you off there, but that's what I want to say about Martha. One, so that's different compared to the old podcast. Yeah, that's true. One bit I didn't remember, and it might have happened or not. See, after the Senate building blew up. <laughs> Wait, did you just say one bit I didn't remember, and it might have happened or not? So you're not quite sure if this is your dream sequence or... No, 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 no. <laughs> no, the, we'll get to the dream sequence. Okay. Um, After the Senate blows up, is it Ultimate Edition where he's actually rescuing people, but that's not in the original? I think so. I think in ultimate, I think in the original, that, that was actually quite a cool. Wee he bit. just goes away. Oh right, okay, no, see that's not him. Well, it depends if he thinks there's survivors or not. But there, there's always survivors. Yeah, there's so. going to be survivors. The ultimate edition just. It should have a little, little back extra. symbol that appears and says, "This is extra." You know, like the the scene at the start with the parents and the credits and that was that extended. Or was that I don't the same? think so. No. I think that was the same. I think the parts that were extended. I, I didn't remember <laughs> all of that from the first. I've only seen it twice though. I've seen it. I've, so I went to the cinema to see it like three yeah, times. See, my cinema experience put me off in a way because it was three IMAX 3D. Oh yeah. And I hated it. I absolutely fucking hated it. Well, I, th- that's how much I enjoyed the film that I went more than once, and I hate people <laughs> at the cinema because they're noisy and fucking shit. Um. <clears throat> yeah, so the, the, the the part. Excuse me. <laughs> I said, 
what else have you got to, to go with? All oh, right, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so the parts that were extra were the the, the scene at the kind of the military camp. That was all a little bit extra. Where with Jimmy Olsen. Yeah, um, that wasn't that was in the first one, but that those, those bits were extended for sure. When he says like I'm <clears> authorized <throat> to cut you a deal and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, but that bit was in the first one as well, but there were just bits in there that were extended. Anything with the blonde girl with the glasses that was helping Lois out was extended as far as I remember. Right. I couldn't I wasn't sure who she was. No. Um I remember looking actually and it was a familiar name. Yeah. Uh, I think she was meant to have a bigger role in the film actually. Uh, there was the bit some bits with Lex that were extended. Him just being a little bit mental. Uh and the bit some bits with the African woman. Jenna Malone, no. Is that her name? Uh, I can't remember. There's a there's a girl called Jenna Malone. Let's see. Uh, I've not got a picture here. Okay, it doesn't matter. Anyway. Oh no, that's the actress's name. Sorry, Janet Cly- Clyburn, a lab technician. Yeah, all her stuff was 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 extra in the film. I think. Uh, I mean, right. I could be wrong. I'm, but. Because I, I enjoy both. And Can you imagine that? Like, you do all that filming and you're cut out of the theatrical release and you're like, shit! Your, heart, your world sinks and then the ultimate edition comes out and you're watching it like, bastards, back. <gasps> That'd be pretty <gasps> sweet. But you still, get, <laughs> still got paid either way. Yeah, this is true. You still get paid. But you exposure, don't get that exposure, yeah, I know. Exposure is worth so much more if you do it right, Jesse Eisenberg. Oh, okay. Um, still, it still didn't even second time round. It was still no. like, no, nah, nah. For me, if I, if I was Superman, I just, I'd have just punched him right through the face, and for, just been like, "You're the same in every other film, dickhead." Super punch. <laughs> for me, he's brilliant. In fact, he's the perfect Lex Luthor's son. I mean, if you watched the the New Adventures of Superman or the Weekly Adventures of Superman, what was the one with Dean Cain? Yeah, New Adventures. New Adventures. Was that guy Lex? No, he was a cool businessman. Mm-hmm. He was my Lex, but he wasn't Lex. And no. fucking Gene Hackman was not Lex uh, Luthor. No, 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 no. He was Gene Hackman just this, being a comedy 80s bad guy. This is the thing with DC. There's something about DC's writing that Marvel can nail their characters on screen and DC can almost hit the mark. They can almost get it right half the time. Well, what did you think about the Smallville Lex? Oh, uh, I I liked him, but again, he, I liked he, he him. was like New Adventures. He was more the businessman type, because or was oh, what was the dad? What was Michael Rosenbaum? Was he? That's 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 that's. Oh, his dad Lex. was Lionel, wasn't it? His dad was Lionel. Lionel, yeah. yeah. Who was also cool. Yeah, but the thing with Michael Rosenbaum's character is it was also like they split the character up into two pieces. Yeah, because one minute he was evil, next minute he was genuinely his best friend. Yeah, Michael Rosenbaum was the best From, thing about the series. Aye, yeah. I didn't. I af, after he left, I he's a fellow podcaster. Stopped watching it. Is he? Yes. Oh, yes indeed. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. Tom Welling guest starring a couple of weeks ago or something like that on yeah. his podcast. Yeah, we turned Tom down, so he kind of went off and said, "Oh, Michael, we're gonna." We're not meant to say. Oh, shit, sorry, dude. I'm going to edit out 1830. Right, okay, I'll get into that. Got it. Okay, so. If he doesn't, it's because we love and trust each and every one of you. Nice. Yes. Good cover for my laziness. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have said that. I mean... His laziness, he means love. Loveness. <laughs> <laughs> I've been uh, doing the Walter Frey to Kerry. Just occasionally just... Oh, right, okay, I thought you meant at a specific point, like... Oh, nearly there, Oh, nearly no, there. no, no, no. Me. I'm not... <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm not wasting some of that good times for a joke. No matter how good it is, no Yancy. way. I'm in a trans-dimensional place at that point. Um, what were we talking about, Lex? Spongy. Yeah, you you still dislike him. I think that he's brilliant, and I I think it's clearly people are like but that's not Lex Luthor. I know he's the son. It's so they they talk about it. That's all he talks about. He is not the Lex Luthor. Well, we'll see, we'll see. No, but he is not the Lex Luthor. He keeps referencing his dad, like when he's, he's constantly the... talking about Alexander Luthor, the real Lex Luthor. They even say this at the start: the name, the man on with the name on the marquee, and he's like, "No, no, that's my dad." <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this whole there's all this crazy kind of. I don't like it. I don't. It's... But he's meant to be. He's meant to be all fucked up because 
He's meant to play. He's meant to act. How how there's a lot of big actors that just kind of play a version of themselves. And I'm not. And that's that actually not... the advice that Jack Nicholson gave to people. He said, um, "I'm not going to do a Jack Nicholson voice. Just be yourself and let the costume department create the character." Well, there's that as well, but there's got to be an element of creating your own mentality for the character so that you can be in character, especially in theatre. Jack Nicholson was goes, only Jack Nicholson. He was he was if he it was goes Jack Nicholson off in script. Yeah, that's true. In he Batman was in everything. But if you're in theatre, for example, and it goes off script, you need to be in the mentality of that character, or you cannot bring it back around because you you suddenly go, I don't know what that character would say. Here's what I would say. <laughs> but that that's that that's the difference between the American way and the British way. Mm. I would suggest you know maybe to an extent. I'm not saying all American actors so can do. So much more fun. The amount of times I've bailed people out on stage. Well, because you can, can't you? Because mm-hmm. you're you're in the form of the character, whereas the American way is is branded on the Person. actor, yeah. not the performance, or generally has been. And But now, that's why the films aren't working the same, because in te- when it comes to an international market, people, people are want, expecting a higher quality. People want non-Americans. I keep going back to that. but so. Right or wrongly, th- th- it seems to be the case. Yeah. So, I think Lex Luthor is fantastic still. You dislike him still, so that's not really changed. <laughs> um, there's a, do you know the Jolly Rancher scene? How much do you hate that scene? What's the Jolly Rancher? When he puts the sweet in the guy's mouth, and he's asking him for all. He's like, "I want." But Lex puts the sweet in the oh, center. Lex, mouth. I was like, Batman. And he's like, "Well, I want access to the um, alien ship, and um, I yeah. want Zod's body." And I um, think the, I don't know. Did you? Did, did, lots of people dislike that, but I know why they did it. It was kind of a control thing. Like this could be anything I'm putting in there. But well, it's it's not even like as literal. It, it, I mean, it's it's metaphorical and literal. He I, controls them, but you're eating out of the palm of my hand. Hmm. No, I, it was Lex again. I think it's clever. Yeah. I think it's really clever, and it and it also it makes it weird because it's Lex being weird. Mm-hmm. I mean, the fact that fifty year old guy is like just standing there, just having to take this because he wants that um, the the mineral. Mm-hmm. It makes loads of sense. I think there's so so much little um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Moments. Well, yeah, that's not the right one I wanted, but yeah, there's so many little moments throughout the film that show actually it gets more clever every time I watch it. I want to watch it again. Mm. I do. I think yeah. it's become it's even more clever. I think they just rushed it. I think if you you step out of the story for a minute and look at, and again, I'm certain I would have said this before. But this film was stitched together from four key ideas and they could have made four independent films out of this because you've got Justice League so next film Justice League is going to be an extension of the story started in this one It'll be a, basically it should be a repro of Justice League number one but DCU up DCFU, DCSU whatever it is yeah. um, you've got the Arkham elements as well with some of the choreography and the fight scenes and things like that. You've got the Injustice dream sequence, as I call it, where Batman's got his own regime. Eh, Superman's got his own regime. And, you know, you see Batman fighting all the, the random, almost like Hawkmen or something. Um, oh, it's well, the Parademons. It's... it's um... Is it because the Parademons are metal in the trailer for Justice League? They're mechanical. I think it's meant to be, meant to be power demons. Uh, I'm not convinced. But huh. Maybe they're, that's the. Maybe that was their original concept for it. But no, because Superman wouldn't work with power demons. They're not a. Uh, Dark side wouldn't work with. But the Omega symbol was there. So I think it was a little bit more. I think mm. it was a little bit more. What was it? Ultimates? You think it is? Ultimate universe? No. What do you call injustice? it? Injustice. Yeah, I don't think it's. I think it's kind of injustice, but I think they also threw in some Dark Side, and some power demons for just. The, the, to show that that's what's coming maybe but then it makes more sense that it's totally in, well maybe maybe Darkseid's end goal is that he makes turns Superman, Superman into a subordinate possibly be, because it's not so much a dream sequence but a glimpse into the future caused by the rift through time by the Flash is it or is it just Batman's mind no I because he's asleep the whole time 
Because he nods off, or he could have nodded off, like they do in Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, where you see someone just uh-huh. close their eyes for a second, open their eyes, nothing's changed, but things start getting a bit funky, and then they get their head smashed through a TV, or a nurse tries to shag them, and then turns out she's, she's got monster. like tongues that tie you to the bed and shit like that. Like, it's still would be quite funky. Um, Tentacle porn! But, uh, I think it, I think it's a a premonition. Maybe yeah. Forced by by the flash. flash from the future. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Because then he appears midway. Th- th- well, at the end of it, it's still I'm still not a fan of double dream sequence, but I think. It will be explained, and I think the Flash will go back. And I, I actually think Flashpoint will involve him going back to warn Bruce. Is that still happening? This Flashpoint idea. I think they're going to put it in at some point. And if is they it don't, going to be part of the universe, or is it going to be a separate? Well, I just would leave that for the news. They'd leave that for the news, okay? Arsehole. Um. So basically this is a the action in that scene was pretty awesome though and yeah. the idea of that scene was pretty awesome though. well this is the future but the... Batman putting his hand through Superman putting his hand through Batman's chest that was directly out of injustice as well yes because he does it through the Joker doesn't yeah. he um, I think I can't remember what I was going to say oh, which no. is good I'm a knob because I cut you off yes you um... said it was like a premonition a dream within a dream a double dream 16th wall uh... yeah no um (laughs) (laughs) everyone's on the edge of the fucking seats here well I hope so (laughs) that's what would happen if Martha or Lois died now I'm pretty sure the Flash said that Lois was the key was it Lois? he said it was Lois right okay because Batman would have been like Martha and then like went through space and time to get the Flash so Presumably, Lois will be in grave danger again, but in the future, due to Darkseid, and will he will, and I, I think Darkseid will say, "Listen, you enslave this population, and you're the general of this world for me." Mm. Or General Sod. Yeah. So once they defeat Steppenwolf, Darkseid comes, whoops some ass, and tells Superman, "Right, you're my, you're the new Steppenwolf." Is it wrong when I hear Steppenwolf? I just think. The band. I can't even think of any songs right now. No, I it's, I think it's a stupid name. Yeah. Steppen Wolf. Steppen Shit. Yeah. It's not a great name. No. But I, th- I think the dream sequence... I, I've just said a few ways there you can explain it away. Mm, oh, yeah. There, there's, there's ambiguous ways to explain most of it. But... Yeah. I think at the end of it all, it's just going to be a big dream. It's got. To be, I think it's got to be explained, but I would. I would understand if they didn't because they're a little bit messy right near, right now, <laughs> right now. <laughs> they haven't got a fucking clue. A, a few things that um, I really enjoyed was when Batman goes chasing after the white Portuguese, the the, the cargo of the white Portuguese, oh, which right, is okay. the the kryptonite. Yes. Yeah, and he's like. The grappling gun, and then he's shooting guys with the guns from his from the Batmobile, killed, and they're shooting him. He then he's killed people. Oh dear, he's driving through walls. The whole thing, and he gets he hits like a fucking boat, and then he turns the corner, and then just clips Superman's fucking leg, and the Batmobile's fucking wrecked. <laughs> and and Supes is just like rip. This is your last chance. Don't answer the signal again. And Batman's like. I need to say something. Think of something cool. Hey. Do you bleed? <laughs> Sips is like, Who talks like that? <laughs> At least he said it to Superman and not Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He asked all my humans that. <laughs> Imagine that. He just like sidles up to him. He's like, Do you bleed? And she goes, Yes. Once a month. And he just kind of keeps the face. And just sidles away again. Just, 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 just walks back into the shadows. <laughs> you will. <laughs> and runs away. She's a scary bitch. I haven't even seen... I, I can only go with what's in that. And, ah, uh, yeah. You know what? From when she comes into it, her bit's it's kicking, eh? fucking awesome. She's cool as fuck. I, I'm, 
I'm looking forward to watching the saviour of the DCEU next week. And how, or this week. How good is the her theme tune? Oh, when the guitar bit kicks in. And yeah. She's, yeah, that's... That was about the highlight of the film for me. Okay, so I was loving every second of it all the way, basically. Um, I'm even better with the dream sequence. Martha, I think, is actually not the worst thing ever. The, the, <laughs> small, the small things that bother me is, I don't know how he decided that the spear would, would, would should stay in this building. Like he was going to get put through this building. Mm-hmm. I would rather it was maybe attached to him or something. But, okay... Whatever. I mean, I could I could nitpick any Marvel film to fuck as well if I wanted to, and I think Don't we probably you have. Dare. Oh, no, we have. We've we had have. a fair punt at it. Um, and you know what? I'm sure he just took off the iron Batman suit off camera and jumped in the bat plane. And I think that he need if he went in with and the attached the cape. Yep, I think if he went in with the iron Batman suit, um. Don't do this to me. I think if he went in with the Iron Batman me? suit, yes, you. What was I doing? You. I was rubbing I, my eye. I'm try, no, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to believe it's okay. Oh, okay. okay. I think if he went in with the metal Batman suit, he would have been too slow for Martha. For Martha. I agree with you there. I think that's why he had to do it the way he did it because it was a lot. Quicker. He couldn't just tank them because he took out that, all those guys in like two minutes or something like that. He would. He would. Would have needed the dexterity. Also, the suit was pretty damaged. Yes. So <coughs> you need to get the Firefly quick. Need to be faster. Um, yes. With his regular sort of suit, that would have been too slow. Then he for him. grabs Martha to rescue, and he goes, "Do you bleed? Do you bleed?" And then he's like, "Oh no, wait, it's the wrong thing. You're coming with me. <laughs> Come with me if you want to live." <laughs> well, that that would be Terminator. Yes. You screwed up, didn't you? No. Oh, okay. You meant to do Terminator. Yeah, he's, he's just—he doesn't know his lines. He's just written up everything. <laughs> or you don't know your lines. His line is it anyway? Indeed. So. The cape thing still slightly bothers me. I still would have put that in. Whatever you know, I'm dropping the stuff and pulling on the mask in the in the in the plane, in the bat plane. But oh, this film is fuck for me. It's fantastic. It's a work of art, and you've it gets been, better. You've been buzzing about this Razzy magnet for ages. And um, a few people that I noticed. Well, one person I have not confirmed, but I'm pretty sure C. T. Fletcher was in it in the prison yard scene. He he he. he um, Shanks the the guy that Batman right. had scarred. He's a kind of a fitness personality, like a, a bodybuilder type ah, guy. Ah, okay, and a knifeist as well. And right. a knifeist apparently as well. I th- I'm sure it was him. Maybe it's not, but yeah, I'm well, sure it was him. Yeah, we had this discussion him. last week, two weeks ago, and you were wrong. About what? The big guy. Oh yeah, well, we better check if CT. Can you type in CT Fletcher and BBS? <laughs> no. My phone is no, and <coughs> Neil deGrasse me. Tyson was in it, and he is uh, like mm-hmm. a nuclear. You know? Him? Yeah, yeah. CT Fletch. He is in it. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm agreeing right. with you about Neil deGrasse Tyson. Yeah, um, he's like a nuclear physicist or some some bullshit. Like he, he, whoever he was meant to be talking about on that show, he's actually qualified. And I've listened to various podcasts with him and Joe Rogan. It says it's not. Oh really? Thing. Oh well. Looks well like him the way. Is it this guy here? Uh, yeah, yeah. He's in a, he's in one movie. It's called "I Accidentally Domed Your Son." I think I'll be honest. Kind of looks like a porno. Oh. Uh, he got one point seven out of ten on IMDb. I see though, him. So, so well done, guys. Uh, hang on. Anyway, for a second there, I thought it was him. <clears throat> I like the fact Neil deGrasse Tyson was in it because, and there's a lot of like. Little bits with with real news reporters and John Stewart and shit like that popping yeah, up, which was kind of cool. Yeah, not John Stewart, but John Stewart nonetheless. <clears throat> yeah, so that was pretty cool. Um, I definitely think that your call of Jared Leto, Jared Leto's Joker is actually Robin. Yeah, the the evidence is there. It's so there. Yeah, like so freaking there. Um, what what other things did you not like about the film before we kind of rescore it, if you will? Uh, I didn't even write down our, our old score. I could probably get them from Stu Stats, but I don't think I could get them in time without pausing the podcast. The okay. podcast. The podcast. The podcast. Um, to be honest, I didn't like the fact it was half an hour longer. Um, but did it make it bit, like more clear for you? Did it make it flow better? Things that. 
the, the problem is I don't remember it from the cinema very well. Right. Okay. In fact, I don't remember it from the cinema at all. So there might there was a little less confusion by the time I got to the end of the film, but. But is that because you just saw it for a second time? Possibly, yeah. You know, and I, I knew who Martha was by this point. I realised they both had the same mum. You know. See, I just Jesus, never what once. If it, what if his mum had been swept away by the tornado, right? And then Jonathan raised him. And then the last thing he says is, Jonathan. And Batman goes, nah. <laughs> you know? and, and, like. Well, he might have said, save my father. Super died. No, he wouldn't have, because he didn't go save my mother. See? Is it possible? Is it possible that Clark Kent knew that Bruce Wayne's parents died and he knew who. He would know who Superman is. He would know who Batman is, obviously. He would know who Batman is. He doesn't know it's Bruce Wayne. No, he does. No, he doesn't. He, he knows that. He can see through his fucking cat. He, say, he says something at some point, actually, doesn't he? Yeah. And Batman knows who he is as well. Yeah, because yeah. they, they met each other previously, but he knows. They both know. Yeah. So is it possible he said save Martha because he thought that would snap him out of it more? Maybe. See, what they could have done there is had Clark Kent like, reading a, a snippet of Bruce Wayne's parents' death. It's just those little things, motherfuckers, that would make things perfect. Exactly. But you don't even have to, you don't need to have someone saying it. Just have it dropped in there. Yeah. You know? That would be sweet. But he's a reporter. He knows that he's going up against Bruce Wayne. Mm-hmm. Let's research who Bruce Wayne is then, shall we? Instantly, that's probably the... He's a human. Th- Let's deal with humans. He's the second thing. It's the second thing you'd probably read about him, other, like, other than the most current like, f- like, philanthropic mm. um, or um, potentially, you know, what, what super morally smashing. Yes, the fanny fiddle and philanderer that he is. Exactly. Here's something I wanted to know that I never really thought about <coughs> previously. What happened to Wayne Manor? It's totally burned down. I bet you've never thought about it. It's totally burned down. He lives in the boat house and Alfred works at the bat cave. Uh, yeah. He's at the boat house with some fucking slag. He's at the boat house all the time and he goes for a walk up to Main Wayne Manor just before he goes on his suicide mission against a god. Yeah. He goes up to the burned down Wayne Manor. Maybe he burnt it down and in a pocket watch he scratched in a message that said remember 3rd October 2011 and then he sealed it shut with alchemy and walked away knowing that he could never turn back. And him and his brother in the metal armour, the Iron Batman suit, just walk around and save the day. And when the fight starts, he like turns his arm into a knife. And I think you've made a compelling crossover idea. Have I? I think so, yes. Full metal Batmanist. Ba- Batmanist. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I want to know what happened to Wade Manor. See, I don't know. Maybe that's all part of. Maybe that's where Robin got killed. Yeah, and Joker by burned the other burned Joker, away. who's now going to be directed by Scorsese, and actually it's that all makes, linked into one big. Well, that makes big. a whole bunch of sense to me. So Robin gets beat to shit <clears throat> after trying to kill the Joker himself because Batman refuses to kill the Joker, a la death in the family. But he doesn't get killed. He and he doesn't become the Red Hood. He becomes Jason Todd the new Joker. Red becomes the new Joker for a bit and maybe Jared Leto will become the Red Hood and falls in love with Harley Quinn yes um, or yeah, although yeah. Harley Quinn was meant to have helped kill Robin that does say they just say that in Suicide Squad right okay so do you know what makes me think the, it was the three that bullets. makes it suddenly a problem the three bullets and the uniform the Robin uniform has got three bullet holes in it so it is Joker right and Joker's got three bullet scars on his same shoulder so it's a little touch, but I think DC, you know, in the same way that Star Wars bottled it out of Jar Jar being the villain. Yeah. I think DC are going to bottle it with most of their ideas. I think they've set out these great ideas and they're just going to lose them. I mean, let's make superhero films. And, uh, yeah. Let's go back a little bit to go forward. Yeah. And, <laughs> but I think, I think um, apart from that, they said Harley helped kill the original Robin. Well, okay, actually, she helped kill the last part of his psyche. Yes, yeah, yeah. I think that's what it is. I think it's they've just drove him, drove him insane, basically. Have you seen the Killing Joke or read the Killing Joke? Uh, no, and no. Right, okay. but I know that Batman laughs at the end and then kills the Joker. Yeah, everyone, no, he doesn't kill the Joker. 
they're laughing as they're waiting for the police to arrive and take him away. Oh, right, okay. He doesn't kill him. But in the, huh. in the killing joke, do you want me to tell you what happens? Have you got it so that I could borrow it? No. Okay. Just to do it for them. Right. So, spoiler, but in the killing joke, basically what happens is Joker bursts into Commissioner Gordon's house, shoots Barbara. Um, I'll put her in a wheelchair, right? Yeah, and yeah. the bullet goes through her spine. Uh, or damages her spine or something. He takes Commissioner Gordon away to a circus that he's bought over on a fairground, sorry, that he's bought over and he's got a bunch of freaks and performers there and stuff like that. And he puts them through a roller coaster, a fairground ride, like a train thing, a ghost train. Uh huh. Trying to drive them insane, basically. So maybe, maybe they do that to Robin instead. But they win and he turns insane. Because Jason Todd is full of like. Doesn't one of the roles become the Joker in the comic books anyway? No. No? Comes the Red Hood. Who becomes a Joker in the comic books that's not the Joker? That it's like a kid? I don't know. I'm sure there's someone, because I'm sure I've seen an animated version of it. Because there's, there's the Under the Red Hood, which is what the Joker wore in the first place, and that's Jason Todd. Uh, but I don't know. Robin becomes. Anyway. Joker. Um, I think I'm out of notes, and I think I'm probably going to succinctly sneeze. Oh yeah. dear God! <laughs> succinctly sneeze. Joker's <laughs> death. <laughs> seen uncensored. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. Did There's the only way you're going to get content this week. <sighs> Tim Drake. Oh, I'm no. even trying to pause this. No, <laughs> no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um. Well, the mouse isn't working, so we're stuck. stuck. What, are you trying to sneeze or something like that? Uh, I think I'm going to have to go and blow my nose oh, a fucking no. shit ton. Um, That's not the spoiler horn, he's just blowing his honk, his conk. His conk, yeah. Um, honk, honk. Unless, you want a, unless you want to take over for a minute or two. Well, why is the, why is the mouse thingy there? Well, I can just rant on about... No, because that's for movie news. Uh, no, I can just rant on about how shite Batman versus Superman. No, I can't leave you alone to do that. No, you can't. I cannot be trusted. I can't be left alone with this DC clusterfuck. So you you can't find anything, no? No, it is. There's nothing there. You've just fucking dreamt I'm it. Made up in my head. Yeah, it might have head. happened, but it's not something I found. No, is there at. not like something in a cartoon or something? There's like a like a little like a, a, a teenage Joker just sitting there. I maybe. don't know. Anyway, maybe you guys will know and you can let us know. Yeah, because we don't know and not. you know and we need to know. Yeah. Um, you can get a virtual high five if you let us know. And well, even, no, we'll do a shout out on the podcast for y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shout out would be the virtual high five as well. Here's to X who gets a virtual high five. Oh, okay, that's better. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. You need to forgive me. I'm sick. I'm slow tonight. <laughs> What's your excuse all the other times? Uh. I'm bad at my job? Nah, you're not. Oh, thanks. Um, you're fucking terrible. Okay. It's <laughs> nice. Um, I think time to just round it up. Time to score. Time yeah, to score. Yeah, to score. Um, well, ah, now, or, or, originally, I gave, and this is courtesy of Stu Stats, thanks Stu. Do you know what I want to say thank you to Stu for the stats? I also saw that other piece of work that he's done on the website where we thought it's racking up our totals total time frame that is some two major days effort. worth of films you're three days worth of I'm films three and, a, three and a half days worth of films okay. and that's not including all the series I watch plus all the wrestling I watch and I watch shit with Kerry I'm not even quite sure when I go to the gym <laughs> but you know it just proves that you can you can be in shape and watch a fucking ton of films anyone who can help with that I think there is one person. I Who's think uh, one company in particular being Alpha Fitness. Uh, yeah. And how do I get in touch with Alpha Fitness? You can contact them through this website or... Th- oh. <laughs> when I said through this website, I thought I said through this podcast and I was going to say through this website and the website. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. At the buffgeekpodcastblog.wordpress.com That's the one. Um, you'll get them there for the personal training for training plans, tradition plans, whatever. So, thanks to Stu Stats on the Buff Geek Podcast blog at wordpress.com. Yeah. We originally gave Batman vs. Superman 
15 out of 20 for the banana nano and the meter. Okay. Right? Yeah. And that ranks it joint 20th in our overall rankings with Incredible Hulk and... Oh, oh, Sean, Yoni me. Sean. Sorry, and Guardians Volume 2. Oh, really? You must have given it a really bad score. Well, actually, you'd be surprised. You gave it 8, I gave it 7. Guardians 2, you gave 6.5 and, and I gave 8. So that doesn't even add up. Oh, Stu! It oh, it does, because Steve was there, and he gave it an 8. And it averaged out at Oh, okay, right, fair, 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 fair. Yeah. Right. So if he hadn't been there to bump up the score... So you gave, a, you gave it a six and a half? I gave it a seven. A seven, and I gave it an eight. Yep. Okay, so on, on the second viewing, with the extended cut, and I don't know, if do we just, do we grade this as an extended cut, then? Or do we just retcon it? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have it as an extended cut, just to kind of leave that untouched and have it reviewed twice, in a way, I guess. But then we have to do it for... Suicide Squad. So maybe we just review... But Captain America Civil War's in here twice from both our reviews, from episode 15 and from episode 138. Okay, well, the, the interesting thing is we, we were... That was the... BVS was the first film we ever reviewed. Yeah, it was my first ever podcast. I was so excitable back then, obviously, with the seven. Yes. Well, I think we were being conservative. Oh, you were know, we? Well, this is the thing, right? Well, maybe you weren't, but I think... <laughs> I think that... Or maybe you were excitable, I don't know. That's but, what I'm saying, I was excitable. But I think after reviewing 15 Marvel films and having a bearing on what we like and what we don't like, I think the review needs to change in a lot of ways. Right. Anyway, so, do you want to do yours first? Well, I, you fall was, asleep? I was all in, all intended on just marching on in and going, Batman vs Superman, 2 out of 10. But you know what? The extended cut did leave me slightly less confused at the end of it. Um, I take what you're saying about the Martha snapping him out of it and there are some awesome moments in it that I love but I hate the fact that Batman's crossed that line that Batman never crosses ever although he does cross it in Dark Knight Returns because uh, he actually snaps the Joker's neck in it uh, which is pretty brutal Oh, um, he has to he's, Joker's stabbing him like repeatedly Stabbing him in the side, so he just snaps his neck. Um, we also sort of kills the villains in the in the old Batman films. Don't remember them. Well, Joker. <clears throat> Joker falls in a. Does he not? I can't remember. Yeah, <clears throat> he, he he doesn't stop them from dying. Yeah. Oh right. Oh, well, I've already spoiled spoiling spoilery stuff, which was a bit of a spoil. Yes. So, what are you going to score it? I am going to actually stick with 7. Yeah. Okay. Because I gave Thor The Dark World 6.5. And, and I would rather suffer Batman vs Superman again than Thor The Dark World again. Okay, but what did you give a 7.5 or an 8 that might change that? Well, I gave Age of Ultron a seven and a half, and I would not put it up there with Age of Ultron. Oh, really? So I think it's it's pretty much where it needs to be. Uh, I gave Iron Man three a seven and a half. I would happily watch Iron Man three again over Batman vs Superman, mainly because I could watch Iron Man three twice in the time it takes to watch Batman vs Superman. Oh my gosh! Edition. Really? You'd watch Iron Man three? You think Iron Man three's better? Yeah. So therefore. Holy. 7 Jesus. out of 10, 7 sort of green ripen at home bananas out of 10, from me. Right, okay, well I'm looking at my scores here, and uh, the score I gave it last time was an 8, and I think I I was being very conservative back then, and after and looking at the films that I've scored, such as Iron Man, a 9, Spider-Man Homecoming, 9, Civil War, a 9.5, Logan, a 9.5, Wonder Woman, an 8.5, Doctor Strange, an 8, which I actually think is, that seems awfully high. Mm, for Doctor Strange. Yeah, I think I want, uh, yeah, Thor, an 8, <laughs> Based on some of those, I really do think that Doctor Strange is wrong. I don't know what I was doing that day. Yeah, but we we probably changed the order. I don't know. 
Wait, am I? Yes, I'm. Yes. Hmm, that's weird. What? I don't think I would have made Doctor Strange an, an eight. Why not? You did enjoy it. You enjoyed Rachel McAdam. You enjoyed some of the visual effects. You enjoyed Mad, Mads Mikkelsen. Mm-hmm. You loved, 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 loved Tilda Swinton, the subject of your first podcast. Oh, I did love Tilda Swinton. But, uh, huh, hmm, interesting, very interesting. So I liked it better than Age of Ultron? Yeah, that's fine. I didn't like it better than, oh, okay, sorry, okay. I'm starting to read things here and I'm being a penis. Um, Basically, I fucking loved this film and I loved it even more watching it again and I want to watch it. I I wanted to watch it again as soon as it finished. So I am going to give it... Man, you, you love all the sadomasochism and stuff like that, don't you? I love the pain. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a 9.5. Equal to Rogue One, Logan, Fuck Avengers Assemble off. and Captain America Civil War. Jesus, man. Did four Razzies teach you nothing? It's four, a masterpiece. Four Razzies it gets better. Out of eight it categories. Gets, it gets better every 50% time. 50% success rate at the Razzies. The... They obviously would give it that because it would get them the most. They get the Razzies the most fucking buzz. Anyway, so that if it's a nine point five and you give it a seven, that's bumped the score up to sixteen and a half now. Yeah, divided by two. Uh, eight and a quarter. Yep, that's the one. Ah, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Stu can sort it out. You can round it up or down, Stu. Down. It's up to you. Down. No, I just have to start using quarters. We're not American, okay? We have pennies and... Okay. 50p's and... Anyway, you score it a 7, I score it a 9.5. Will you voluntarily watch it again? <laughs> no. Okay, I will easily... I'll I probably... will YouTube the best bits again. I've watched that warehouse scene so many times. I'll probably watch it once a year. Easy. Um, Like I'll potentially watch Logan once a year Rogue One once a year all the Star Wars films once a year you know it'll be something that I watch now for the rest of my life yeah it's in there for me and that and that's it but we want to know what you guys think about the film and obviously as we said there is the second ever podcast which deals with BVS on a deals with it not well enough we had to review it again well we were, we were doing a run you know, and then we, because th- we're going to finish with Justice League, and then we're going to review the whole DCU like we did with, with Marvel. Right. Okay. Yeah, but then we changed our mind because DCU is shite. No, <laughs> we didn't change. No, that didn't happen. Anyway, don't go anywhere because we're about to review Suicide Squad, what? or re-review Suicide Squad, or Just add to Suicide Squad the cry review. Cry a little. So. We're going to take a small break, which you guys will not even notice, and come right back. <laughs> there should be no change in the tone of my voice because we didn't actually take any breaks there, even though I told you we did. I need to pee. You still need to pee? No. You just went three minutes ago and ten minutes before that. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Anyway, we're going to continue this DC... Oh, clusterfuck. What are we calling it? It's not the that, DCEU. That's right. It's I call really it. annoying. The clusterfuck. The DC movie uh, needs a nice ring to it. We're going to talk about Suicide Squad, and as we said at the start of the podcast, we're putting the two of these together because we've both we've reviewed them individually previously, and actually both episodes are really really good and possibly more in depth. But it's interesting to see what's happened a year on, and obviously, well maybe not obviously, but we are reviewing Wonder Woman next week, and then we'll be doing Justice League in about a month's time, and then we'll kind of put all the DC stuff together and which actually probably won't take well if, if DC has five films and Marvel has 15 it will take a third of the time to talk about them in a whole and by that time David might actually want to cry anyway so we, <laughs> we might just do that in the Justice League one anyway yeah mm-hmm. because I don't think well it's not got the same amount of films it's not went on for the same amount of years so it's no, kind of different that, this is the thing it's got four films it's not a it's not a universe. It's, it's a, not ten years worth it's of a quadrilogy at this stage, if anything. Well, I suppose that yeah, you've got that point there. So anyway, Suicide Squad. Uh, did you have time to um, review it to an extent? No, no. 
Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Okay. But suicide Squad actually sticks I, in my I, head. I, a bit I, I moved. I moved this forward, so that's also my fault because I thought tonight I might have to go was away. Suicide Squad perusing night. Tonight, yeah, because you're yeah. So it's, it's again basically everything that's wrong with the 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 show right now is my <laughs> fault. I was away last week. I moved it forward tonight to, to tonight, and I am sick. So sick in the head. So that's it's all. Wow. Wow. Oh, you just seen my messages? Yep. Yeah, I was trying to put you off when you were reading. Them. No, not at all. The stats. Not at all. <laughs> so, Suicide Squad. Do you want to start, or do you want me to start it? Well, I think to summarise the whole thing, I liked the casting. I hated the story. There were some nice elements. Job done. Six and a half. Oh my god! Okay. <laughs> right. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, but we do you know what? we never talked about how much we like about the cast or anything for BBS. Obviously, I loved all the cast, I um, everyone. and the music's good. <laughs> okay, rightio. Anyway, so we've got Suicide Squad. Yep, Suicide Squad, which was originally episode twenty-eight. Um, which will be linked in the description if you want to hear yeah, the original um, fuller version and to hear the beautiful. Uh, tones of Ian Stobie and for completeness Wonder Woman was originally reviewed in 136 yeah, and the reason we're redoing that and I know you said we should just not do it but the reason we're redoing that is because you did Wonder Woman on your own I did it on my own there was no high five yeah, yeah. so we need a high five yeah we need to do Wonder Woman together and high five yep oh, yes. high five <laughs> high five and Man of Steel was episode 167 which was just just previously yeah you know, so they'll be uh, they'll be, they'll be all linked in the description there, so you don't have to do too much. Yeah, it's okay. It's all good. We got you covered. Covered. So, so yeah, um, going back to Suicide Squad, that episode was quite fun because that was the first time with Ian. So we were all like quite hyper, quite excited. I'm sure it was the first time with Ian. I could be wrong. I think me and Ian had probably done something. Oh, okay. to, bef- before but not the three of us that was our first triple threat our first three way if you yes, will yes a menage a trois will you stop fidgeting you fucking no, fuck my knee hurts oh um, runner's knee it's actually a lack of running that I think is doing it not strengthening or keeping it strengthened I had problems with my knee before I started running and it disappeared interesting but, yeah but you lift weights I didn't then oh okay and I'm doing more weights now than I was mm-hmm so maybe that's causing it. I don't know. Maybe you're not stretching. Are you stretching much? Stretching these guns. No, yeah, you don't stretch, do you? Never. Never. I need to. But anyway, this isn't about me. This is about... This is about you fucking fidgeting. Yeah, I'm really fidgety now. I'm sorry. Suicide Squad. Yeah, so like I said, I loved the casting. There were some great moments in the film. There was some great... You love- loved all the casting? All of them? Batman was a better Batman in Suicide Squad than he was in Batman vs Superman. Because he was just, no shit, take them out, job done. If anything, I disliked the way they used Batman in Suicide Squad. I felt it was a cheap link to the other films. Because it looked cheap? Yeah, it was. It was was cheap, but he was just no shit, no anything, get the job done. Deadshot. When you see him in Deadshot, how outclassed does Deadshot look? Compared to Ben Affleck, who's absolutely monstrous. Uh, yeah. Like, how, who's fast at that size? A well, Batman, apparently, but he looks huge. And it just looks. It doesn't look like they're part of the same world. That is something I do have to say about it. Yeah, well, this is true, and th- that's where it kind of felt like they kind of went, and it was almost a cheap link in mm-hmm. to <sighs> combine them in some way because you've got. Cavill in Man of Steel and BBS. You've got Affleck squeezed into Suicide Squad and he's in BBS as well, obviously. And you've got Wonder Woman in Wonder Woman and BBS. So you've got this sort of link to the three of them are all in a second film yeah. from their joint film. Just to try and hold it all together. I couldn't imagine Jared Leto fighting Ben Affleck Batman. No, he can't. But then the Joker really can hold his own in a straight up fight. Against Batman, yeah, it, it's it's trickery, it's gadgets. There, it's sort of genius versus insanity in a way. 
you know, and yeah. yeah, there's a fine line, so that's how they're evenly matched kind of thing. Um, yeah, his Joker wasn't so great. Really? You don't think so? It had, in hindsight, I mean, you've seen my rant on the, the website, I just didn't like... I, I seen what he did. He was trying to make him gangster, modern day gangster, because Joker was originally, at the time, current day, almost gangster style. Yeah. Um. So he's tried to bring him up to current day, but and also keep him as far away from Heath Ledger as possible. Yes. Because Heath true. Ledger was messy looking. Yes. Dirty looking. Uh huh. Whereas this Joker is stylized, modern gangster, but everything was pristine. Yeah. Hair, the makeup, everything was. And he brought some elements of his music into it because the Joker was very emo in this film. Oh, mopey because he hasn't got his Harley Quinn. Ah. Uh, a uh, Joker's kind of. Joker's been like that in the cartoon. <sighs> When Harley's went missing. If Harley's gone missing, Joker He's... will have little moments, but he'll have like literally like a minute and then he'll be Oh well and he'll be on yeah, with But that's that. a minute out of twenty. So no, even in the comics and so things what's, like that. What's that? Ten percent? Like, oh, I miss my Harley. And then he'll be five percent. Nah. But so, that's 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 how you do it in a twenty minute show. You know, compared to a film. So yeah, but he, I just felt he was too focused on getting her back too obsessed like she's a side that she's a side project like he'll be working on something if she's convenient to grab or rescue or whatever he'll go get her and come back see yeah. i like the love story between the two of them that i mean and i i don't expect him to be the the same joker as the cartoon or the or the comic book or the whatever I've never seen the cartoons i've seen the animated movies but never the you never yeah. seen the oh <gasps> well you kn- why? How did you miss that as a I kid? Just, I don't know. I just did. It's fucking bra. Mm, I've heard that, and obviously it's really it's got, good. It's got Mark Hamill, and is it Kevin Conroy it's in that de- as well? Yeah, I think so. It's designed in a certain way that just really. I think it, I've not watched it back really since, mm-hmm. but I really want to because the style they chose for the art is is not um, indicative of the nineties. Mm, no, it's not. So it's, it's it's quite sharp and it's kinda, just timeless, yeah. you know. So anyway. that's that's what I think works. But anyway, so you're sorry, we, me, we meander. Um, so yeah, but like I said, for me, it's strange. But you know who sticks in my head the more I think about Suicide Squad from watching it a long time ago? It's Captain Boomerang. Yeah, he he, he sticks out in my mind more than even Joker. I forgot about Joker if I'm honest, and Harley. Who we might be thinking Deadshot is just Will Smith with a red eye. Um, Deadshot, Deadshot is kind of just Will Smith. Was Will Smith. And yeah, okay, so Floyd Lawton is kind of like that anyway. But he's less interested in well, let's go save the world. And usually just a bit more interested in like how he can get out of that situation or how he can make money. So I enjoyed most of the casting though. Just to reflect back on that part. Okay. Um. So you weren't so so much in the Joker. You liked Captain Boomerang. How would you feel about Har- Harley Quinn? Mixed. She's the best on screen sort of live action. But then I think she's the only live action we've had so far of Harley yeah. Quinn. Yeah. Yeah. Um. She did. She did well. Um. I don't think she was crazy enough. She was almost crazy in a glamour girl, I'm so crazy, almost Geordie Shore forced kind of way at times. So. You st- have you heard her accent? It's good. It is good. But it's... that where she where do you think she's meant to be from? Well, she's meant to be Jersey. from Queens. So. Well, or Brooklyn. Is it Brooklyn? I think it's meant to be Brooklyn, but it's kind of like that Jersey, Jersey accent, isn't mm. it? Because jo- Jersey, Jordy Shore is originally. I play on Jersey Shore. Yeah, which is all a pile of shit. Jersey Shore was fun, okay. I hate all that. First few seasons, okay. Um, hey, reality TV. Oh, you're getting you're getting tired and grumpy now. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I might not make the movie news. Ah. <laughs> that was funny. Just looking at his face there. Okay, so. Fuck you. <laughs> no, the face you made. I oh, meant okay. to say. Right. Okay, so a few things. <laughs> I listened to the original Suicide Squad podcast that we did, mm-hmm. and um, what I'd like to know is, did Ian ever watch Seven Pounds? Because we spoke about Seven Pounds being fantastic. 
It is. It's a and film. Will Smith, uh, for my money, Will Smith is great at being Will Smith in an action film or a comedy, but where he's really shines is in those serious. Um, yeah, Pursuit of Happiness, Seven Pounds, um, Concussion. Never seen it. Oh my God. You don't know it's Will Smith. Right, okay. So different. I've never seen Ali actually. No, neither have I. I just never was that bothered about it because mm. I've never I was a big boxing fan. Um, even less so now. Haha. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought that. <laughs> and I don't know. I just never really pumped my nads to go see it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I want to know if Ian has watched Seven Pounds. Um, I'd like everyone to know that Harlequin's ass definitely one hundred percent was CGI'd, Called as up. you said. I got shot down. Yes. And that's the only notes I've got from to do with that previous podcast. It's because it was awesome. It was pretty good. No, I've got a whole bunch of other notes actually oh, okay. about the about the film. But that was notes I wanted to have right. lead-ins from that podcast. Yeah. So when you go back and listen to it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so things I liked about this this film is um, I liked the I, well I thought it was interesting that um, Amanda Waller seemed to be a fan of Superman. Because when she walks into her secret meeting at the very start, she's kind of got an inner monologue going, and she sees this guy hand, like selling Superman T-shirts, saying like, I don't know, something about uh, like we lost him or something like that. It's something alluding to the fact that he's dead and it's a sad time. And she's mm-hmm. like, and then Superman fell, and you can, I think you can kind of see this little bit of humanity in her where she she liked having the Superman. Mm-hmm. I think she thought that he was a good thing around. Um, to an extent, I imagine, because Amanda Waller likes control. Oh yeah, well, that, that gives. But she would have loved to have controlled him. Maybe that's what she misses. Well, I, I, opportunity. I, I suggest that just the mere appearance of the Superman allows you to go every single week, every single day, at every single meeting. We need someone to fight him, so it meets her agenda. Maybe. You know, so she yeah. might have had a admiration for him on different levels. He gave her a job. Yeah, sort of. Yeah, or maybe he, he got her upped. Maybe you know. Um, another part that I, I really liked at the start was when Batman chases down Joker and Harley, and they crash. Go into the water. And he he goes to pull Harley out, and she tries to knife him. And he just fucking punches her <laughs> once, and it just feels so meaty. It's just like she swipes from him, and he's just like bam. <laughs> knocks her out she's sparkled and the blood just trickles out her nose into the water mm-hmm. which is a clever little bit and also something I noticed when I was watching Blade Runner today long story short Harrison Ford gets his ass kicked he's fine later on he's taking a drink out of a, a, a glass he's taking a drink of whiskey out of a glass oh, sorry vodka out of a glass and you see the blood go into the glass mm. on the way and it was just fucking cool so I like that bit um, what else Leto as the Joker for me was fantastic. Jo- like, how do you make the Joker different? From, yeah, yeah, he, he and, done and well he, to make him different and stand out. Because you got you got Jack, you know, you got Jack Nicholson's Joker. Yeah, it's just he's just Jack Nicholson. He's just Jack Nicholson. You have got the cartoon Joker, which um, most people who most people will not count because it's not in the movies, right? Same way they won't count the live action, the the video game Joker. Exactly. You know, it's a shame. It's a shame, but they won't. So then you go to Heath Ledger's Joker. So you've got eighties kind of chubby gangster type who's a little bit just just a little bit drunk. You've got Heath Ledger Joker who is um fucking psychotic. violent, dangerous, mm-hmm. uh, psychotic. I buy the whole the whole backstory that maybe he was a military war vet. You know, that's mm-hmm. one of the stories that go around about that Joker. And he decides to make himself with this kind of costume because there's a Batman. Yeah. You know? Um, so, I, I, how do you make yourself different? Well, instead of being messy and dirty and like, you go like that, you go the complete way. opposite way and, and go proper gangster, like we kind of said. The, all the, I said it in the last podcast, but all the people with the stuffed animal heads and shit, that's all Jared Leto's idea for sure because that's what he has in his videos. He likes that kind of imagery. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of Jared Leto influence in this Joker. I think that he was allowed to do a lot of things his way. Yeah. And I think that helped by making him totally individualistic. As we've said earlier on the podcast, I think we also think that he's um, he's Robin 
it would make a lot more sense in terms of even just age because Ben Ben Affleck they're both about 40 odd because Jared Leto is about 40 but when he's not got the makeup on and he's he's the he's he's um, you know doing the dream sequence for Harley Quinn yeah Looks like twenty five, right? Yeah, and I mean, if he is to be Robin, he has to be younger than Batman because he has to be a kid when Batman's Batman. Exactly. So, if he he could pass for being twenty years younger than Ben Affleck, mm-hmm. so Amazing. I think it would work. Yeah. You know, um, Harley, I liked. Is she as good as the Harlequin in the cartoon? Maybe not, but she's really pretty good. Um, Deadshot is Will Smith, but. And it's kind of a Will Smith action role with the Will Smith storyline, yeah. but it's not terrible. No, it's not. Um, what else did I like? Da, 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 da. It, the finish of the film with Joker was dope because it makes you. It, I remember thinking Suicide Squad was better than it was because of that finish. If you finish strong. What was the finish again? So when Joker busts in to collect Harlequin. Oh right, yeah, yeah. And then it just goes all comic booky, and then they have that reveal that Amanda Waller's talking to Bruce Wayne and says, "You know something? You need to stop working nights." Aye. And uh, Bruce Wayne was getting all the information about the metahumans offer. That was a fucking sweet finish too. It was like, yeah, oh yeah, yes, oh, that was cool. yeah. Um, some things that I didn't like about it. I've got in here, Darnell can't come. I don't know what that was in relation to. <laughs> Maybe that was for that other film. <laughs> yeah, I think that was for that other film I was reviewing. Yeah. Um, Is that when they go they go to rescue Waller oh. and she kills all her staff? No, I'm not sure. Or is Darnell the Joker's assistant? I'm really not sure. You might have to Dar- S- Darnell S- Suicide S- Squad. Sorry. Um, I also like the Deadshot bargaining. Um, piece where he's he's just on the he's just on the shooting range and then he's saying to Colonel Flagg what he wants, you know, he, he wants this and that for his daughter, he wants a nice school, you know, a nice school where white folks go to and he's like, I have a league and he's like, Yeah, yeah, I have a league school. I think that it was just fucking quality banter between the two of them and really worked. Mm-hmm. Um I liked Colonel Flagg better in this. I can't remember who plays him, but I thought he was right. he was better more enjoyable this time around and I remember Ian told us that Tom Hardy was meant to play Colonel Flagg and I thought oh, what a wasted opportunity to for Tom Hardy for Tom Hardy and it would have been mm-hmm. but in the same token it wasn't that small a role as I thought it was in my head it was actually quite a large role yeah. so it wouldn't have been awful no. for him um, it probably would have made people want a Colonel Flagg standalone <laughs> grunt film but which in itself is kind of a waste but maybe I don't know, maybe he doesn't want to put on a superhero outfit again in the same way, mm-hmm. you know? So there is that. You you going to say something? I'm looking for this Darnell thing, but see when I search Darnell Suicide Squad, see one of the first things that comes up? What? Is uh, things that were wrong, with su- like that shouldn't have slipped through editing or something like that. So I'll need to look into that Darnell thing. It's going to... Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Um... But there is, it's a quote, Darnell can't come from the film. Right. So I don't know what it's about, but I'll find out. Darnell can't come. I can't think either. No. It's going to gonna bug but me. But I can't talk and look at the same time. I'm at that stage. Okay. A um, couple of things that... A um, couple of scenes that I noticed were definitely part of the reshoots was everything with Colonel Flag at the start when he's with Enchantress. Right. When he's with... Uh, Will Smith at the start and he's with Will Smith at the end when Will Smith is kind of in a prison cell that looks like a house for his daughter coming over to you know learn uh-huh. because his beard and his hair is different at the start and the end of the film his hair is long enough to be slicked back and he's got a beard with um, sideburns that join up to the beard right. and midway through the film when they're basically doing all the action sequences in the city he's got short cropped hair which is brushed forward like yours and had no way of being slipped Jesus, back you'd think he would notice that if nothing else and, eh? a, and a small go- goatee which doesn't even it's, it's, I think it's called like a baldo beard it's not even it's just the moustache and the beard it's not even they're, they're not even joined up right. well, that's just bad continuity yeah that's, that's pretty bad so I don't know what they're doing before I'm not even sure if um, the dead people not make them shit themselves a bit with uh, the reshoots I'm sure it was Deadpool made them go fuck we need to be funnier 
Yeah, I think so. And then they went off and reshot based on the success of Deadpool. And the slagging that BBS got. They decided, they decided to make it more fun, you yeah. know? So, that was, those were definite reshoots. I couldn't tell you anything else that was reshot. Obviously, there was lots of Joker stuff missed out, apparently, a full half hour. Um, which would be a cool mini movie to watch. Yeah. Um, just like a, a cool, like, 45 minute like, acid trip with Joker and, and you Harlequin. You can probably find them on the, on the YouTubes. You reckon? I don't know. Like, someone's probably compiled. Compiled? Compiled the. all the, the Joker's best bits onto YouTube. Yeah, you're probably right, actually. I tend to do that for people who are too lazy to go and seek it out for themselves. I can't tell if you're slagging me or not. No, oh. me this time. Oh, okay. Um, things I definitely didn't like. <coughs> the Enchantress. Shite. <coughs> Shit. The Ian's just... seen her in uh, London today. Oh, really? Yeah, he spotted her in Waterstones with her, her minder. Oh. So. She, she was not good. The CGI for her was awful. I haven't... I've only seen her in that, and so from that I rate her as a really bad actress. No, actually, do you know what? She wasn't that bad in some of the scenes. But so th- that's not consistent. The reshot scenes she was bad in. The scenes where Colonel Flag had had obviously film had done the film in the continuity of the the regular time schedule, she was actually okay. But the the swirling dancing stuff was terrible. Um, her brother bit was terrible, and the plot wasn't super clear. Although the film didn't feel like it took that long this time. The cinema felt longer this time around for me. It felt shorter, and I actually. I enjoyed the film more. I also uh, Diablo was fucking sweet. I was gonna. I was just gonna ask about him. Did he die? <laughs> oh, you thought he died, but he came back. No, he dies. He does die. He gets he gets choked out by the by her, her brother, and then they blow up. They they they, they ignite a bomb underneath uh, them, right. which didn't make sense and meant that the Navy SEALs also died as well. Which I I don't know I. I didn't think they needed to do the bomb thing. They could have just had him... Why didn't he just fucking Blow up. incinerate the brother and himself? Yeah. That would have been much better. Because he was cool. Yeah. Killer Croc was just bad. Like, he wasn't large enough he physically. Wasn't, yeah. His head was too big for the rest of his body. It looked like they literally had put like something on him. And mm. it was like on his face and his shoulders a little bit. And that was it. So he was still bad. Um... Like you said, Captain Boomerang was just fucking hilarious. Every time you saw, him, every time you saw him, he was doing. He was just like his facial expressions were just eating up the screen, and he was good. You yeah, know? and this is this is Jay Courtney we're talking about here. I know. It's just, it boggles the brain. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, you've seen. Have you seen Genesis? Is that how you're calling it right? Okay. Terminator, yeah. or Jenny Smith. And Jenny Smith. Yeah. Have you seen it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so he's awful in that, mm-hmm. and I don't know what else he's been in, but Die Hard Five. Oh. I don't know what that is. No, me neither. No, I don't I've think I've so. just heard of it. You've heard of it? Hmm. I wasted the ticket admission. Oh, you did not? Oh, no. Fuck. That's... That's like eight bucks. That makes me cry. No, that's like te- eight pounds, 17 bucks Probably for the Americans. Probably makes me cry to think I paid money to watch that film. I know. It was bad. And I've not even seen it. Um, Slipknot was an awful actor. I don't know who he was, but he had like this lily canned line, and then he was flying off with a zip cord. He was shit. Ah, uh, he was just there. I know, but it was bad. Purely to demonstrate. Um, Amanda Waller was meh. The monsters. I don't understand why the monsters, like the foot soldiers, the putties, we called them. <laughs> why did some of them have machine guns? Because they were, they were soldiers. Yeah, they, were they, were so- they were soldiers, I think. I think like, so. When they were killed, they were absorbed or whatever. Okay, fine. And the Night King was like... <sighs> fair enough, fair enough. But overall, um, I enjoyed the film better than I did the first time I watched it. I should have maybe watched it again. Oh wait, I would have tonight. <laughs> it's just the only way we could guarantee no, the death of the podcast on. Because I might be away tomorrow. This is for you guys. You could watch it again. You could just watch it. <sighs> For enjoyment. I, I actually said that. And, and drop in any, like, next week when we do Wonder Woman, you could just be like, here's a, a few, mm. like, house, ha, house cleaning. House cleaning? Cleaning. House <laughs> cleaning? I, I actually said to Ash, like, because I'd watched it with her originally, because she wanted to watch it. Well, I've noticed we've both given our women's names on this podcast. We shouldn't have done that. Ugh, it's fine. 
people give away names on the podcast all the time. No, but I'm talking about the fucking freaks out there of Hasselman. <laughs> we love you freaks too. Just we love give you. us some comments, likes, and Wow, I gave, I gave Dunkirk a fucking three. Ha <laughs> ha! Fucking suck a dicky in. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. You obviously didn't like that. I've not seen And that. Beauty I, and the Beast of three. Yeah, you give Beauty and the Beast a three. Did they not like it that much? No, I must have not liked not. it. <laughs> Holy shit. I liked it better than Ant Man. This is bullshit. <laughs> Are you upset with your scores? I'm upset with my own actual mind. Be depressed. Be depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Put your scores to the test. <laughs> um, I've totally, totally, totally lost my train of thought. You said to Ash. Oh yeah, she originally wanted to watch Suicide Squad, so we watched it last year, like when it was out. Did she want to watch it because Harlequin? She just wanted to watch it because of the. Did she dress like Harlequin? Um, moving on. And That's a yes. I said to her at the weekend, "You want to watch Suicide Squad again?" And she was like, "No." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> good answer." <laughs> hmm. We finally agree on something. Oh, I'm glad Suicide Squad could give you both that. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, um, I, I, I think it's time to, to score it. You scored Suicide Squad last time with a six, and I scored it with a six and a half. I stand by my original decision yet again. This is like the podcast of no movement for me. It's, it's, it was, it's an enjoyable, middle of the range, leave your brain at the door kind of film. It's... Come on, the cast is good. Yeah, that's that's The casting's got, pretty much almost all good. It. Um, the storyline is pretty good considering it's two films. Yeah. They just considering they had two different plans for it. Yeah. There is too much fun music in it for me because it. I think a lot of the time they're they they're putting in really recognizable hits, so you think you're having a better time than you are. Yep. Which, obviously, is you know movies do that, yeah. but there was a lot of it in this. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it, a lot of it was that kind of, it's not, it doesn't suit what's happening on screen, but somehow Guardians got it right. This is, this for me, this is their attempt at Guardians, yeah. but it missed the mark. Uh, you know what that reminds me of, actually, is in Defenders, when that rap music kicked in in the final fucking arc. shit, eh? It was just out of nowhere. It was an RKO. Yeah, it was basically, let's put something in for Luke. Yeah. You know, and I'm sure it had a little bit of, like, fucking Asian fucking, I don't know, symbols in it and a little bit of fucking <laughs> white guy this and it. it was like, it's just an ensemble thing, yo. That's it. I'm like, whatever. Great shit. <laughs> I am the immortal Iron Fist. That, he's a fucking cock, honestly. I hate that guy. <laughs> I've been watching old Game of Thrones again and I'm telling you, I've said this he, on the shit, last eh? podcast. No. He's shit. He's not bad. He's not the worst in there. You know who's actually surprisingly strange in it? Littlefinger. His accent and voice has changed so much. Really? Yeah. He... Apparently he's meant to be like 25 or something. Well, he's meant to be way younger. Mm, yeah. Maybe. I don't know how he'd be with Catelyn then, but then Ned isn't that old in the books either. None of them are as old as they are in the TV show. Well, I think, Ned, I think... Ned's only like 33 or something in the book apparently. Yeah, and I suppose if you lived the life they lived, you wouldn't you'd, look like, you'd, you'd look like fucking trash by 33. Yeah, that's true. Whereas... I'm older than 33 and I look about 20 fucking 3. I shave my face, I look 16. <laughs> <laughs> you have to take it to the next level, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but actually, you probably would. Yeah. I, I get basically told I'm not allowed to shave my face by the wife. Oh, really? Yeah. I was told I wasn't allowed to cut my hair. And I look too young without my beard. Yeah, she hates the hair like this as well. Anyway, that's not what you guys want to hear. So yeah, I'm sticking... They want to know about our personal lives. I don't know. If you I, do, I, ask us. I want to know what Joe Rogan does. I want to know what uh, Bruce Pritchard does in their personal life. Isn't no, well, maybe a little bit. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> yeah. So, there you have it. Your, your rating. I, you, get, you I said, stood by. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, I was... And you tried to talk me out of it, but... Okay, ain't fine. not going to work. I was going to move mine. BBS is better. And then I... <sighs> Fuck, I can't believe I just... We've got it on tape, we've got it on tape, but that's it. The podcast, that's the last podcast we're ever doing. Come on. Cherish Jubilee, that's it. It's like lining up a pile of cowpats and deciding which one's the best. It's, just, it's still at the end of the day, it's still a big pile of turd. It's not a big pile of turd because you gave it a six, right? 
If it was a big tail pile of turd, a big tail of bird, <laughs> big tail of bird, it'd be le- it'd be a five or less. I'm all over. You knew the second night came out, I was on that. <laughs> I know my, my nose is blocked up, man. What can I do? Uh, um, I was looking at do, the other do, scores. Do, do, do. Uh-huh. Don't do it. We'll get taken off there. I was looking at the other scores, and I was going to change Suicide Squad, but then based on the other scores I've got for other films, I'm like, nah. The weird thing is, before when I watched it, I would probably not have wanted to watch it again. Mm-hmm. I probably will watch it again because it's not awful. <laughs> there you go. There's something for the, <laughs> the front cover of your DVD. This film is not awful. The Buffy Offbeat podcast. <laughs> Brilliant. Like for me, I mean, I'll watch that before I watch Man of Steel. No, I'll. I'd almost consider Pretty Little Liars before I watch any of these films again. And it's fucking terrible. Right. You'll watch BBS again. Probably. And you'll watch Wonder Woman again. Even though you've not seen it yet. But yeah, you will watch, watch it again. It. <laughs> you'll watch it again, Maybe. though. You will. You will. Because okay. it's good. It is good. My time is an absolute fucking premium. It's a luxury <laughs> to, to, to waste it on these films again. <laughs> you fucking hate me, don't you? <laughs> I gave you Suicide Squad off. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. If I, w- would you have rather I said come Thursday night and we watch Suicide Squad on Wednesday? No. Right. You can do anything you want to, alright? You can fucking, you can jerk off looking at pictures of fucking. I can't think of it. Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck. Uh, what? Uh, what? 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 The best Batman ever. I said it. Best Batman ever. So yeah, Suicide Squad does not move. That Batman's got more fucking. Shut that, Christian up. Bale. <laughs> <laughs> So, see, there's a difference between where are they <laughs> and oh, I've lost. I can't you do can't it even do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You've never seen the college humor videos, have you? You seen the college videos, bleed? you might know. Where are they? Uh, Do you bleed? In the college humor videos, it's quite funny. You need to check it out. But basically, what happens is it's like in a police interview room. You see the two coppers walking in, but they're looking at their paperwork at the time and they're like. All right, funny man. So you were at the kids' party and you were a bit drunk, and then they look up, and it's proper like Joker sitting there. Right. And they're like, "Oh shit!" And they run out of the room. Next thing, it's like pitch black, and the lights come on, and it's this like kids' entertainer clown just sitting in the chair, and he's like, "What's good on?" Next thing, this black gloved hand slams his face off the table, and he's like, "Where are they?" <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I think his nose squeaks when he hits the table. <laughs> Sorry. I think it's better if you watch it. Yeah. Yeah. It's still funny though. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, see the other thing that threw me off of the DC EU film review series. The news that's coming out of DC Warner Brother. Yes, that. But also, I thought that Steve was with us for all of them, which is why I was adamant that we were going to do them all. And it wasn't until we did not, until, until you turn up for Man of Steel. Ah! The it Buffy until, podcast will return after this brief technical interlude. It wasn't until you turned up for Man of Steel and told me Steve's not coming, didn't you know Steve can't come to the podcast anymore for a, a little while while he's doing X, Y, and Z? I was like, Who needs oh, Steve, yeah, fuck Steve. No, 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 no. Um, so I was like, oh fuck, um, which kind of makes us reviewing some of these films a bit redundant in some ways, but also not because I've now grown a bigger love for BBS. And I actually like Suicide Squad better. Uh, you're just becoming a regular old fanboy, ain't you? Probably, yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm just getting nicer and nicer <laughs> as you get become You're more... mellowing out in your old age. I'm mellowing. Oh man, I'm so mellow. I, do you know, I, I, I can, I, I'm so fucking mellow. Mellow yellow, is that a fucking Asian joke? Could be now, actually. I never thought Could of that. Could be. That is your new name. I, I'm mellow yellow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yellow. <but> mellow Nero. <laughs> We can say it because I'm Chinese, okay? Fuck you. Fuck you, okay? I can say it. Oh, your cultural appropriation I bullshit. Just spell what? On the car on the way home from MCM, how do you spell Chimera? <laughs> oh my god. These guys were slating me. Road. He did well to keep driving straight. He did, actually, yeah. He did real well. Oh, right, geez. golly gosh, are we going to do movie news then? I'm struggling, if I'm perfectly honest. I've been working the last two nights. We'll see how it goes, but. 
We'll, we'll round this up. We'll round it up now. Yeah. We'll round it up now. Well, thanks for listening, guys. You can find me at DStoby at the usual places. You find us at the Buff Geek Podcast blog at WordPress.com. Over to you, big man. I hope you folks enjoyed this uh, very informal chat with uh, one of us being sick and one of us being very tired because Wednesday night's not the best night for podcasting because he needs a night to rejuvenate. But it was the only way we were going to get it done this week and we've combined two into one. But obviously, as we've said before, there is the BBS review which we'll link which kind of goes in more in depth. So you could go back, listen to that, listen to the Suicide Squad one and then jump right into this and get even more flavour and you just got plenty of content there good fun and all and also it's quite interesting i always think when you watch film back and if you really think about it like a year later or a couple of years later if things change like for you you enjoyed bbs a little bit more, a little bit more and Su- not much. suicide squad about the same I think but you didn't move the scores for me i realized that the scoring other films meant that i how much i enjoyed bbs mm-hmm. um see i'm just always right so to change my scores would be to say that I wasn't right. Well, I think it was actually... I think if we were to review some of the MCU films originally back then, I would have scored them slightly differently. But in the context of having scored 15 films of a universe, I'm like, I, I, I can't like it less than that, so it's got to be that now. Yeah. But I don't know what happened in Doctor Strange. We must have, bar- we must have bargained that up. I mean, oh... No, it's my individual no, score. No, because that's, that's your own score. That's I don't know why I gave Doctor Strange an 8, because it wasn't that... W- it was the cast. It was, it was the cast, it was the action, um, the music, always the music. Music for you. I don't know. Don't maybe, listen to it. I think I should listen to that. I'm going to listen to that podcast, actually. In fact, <laughs> do you know what? I'm, what was I thinking? I'm going to link that podcast into this one, even though it's kind of random, because it's really relevant to this podcast. <laughs> I've said podcast too many so times. Funnel. Hashtag the Buff Geek Podcast. Tell me, do you bleed? You will. <laughs>